Who would have thought socks would make us millionaires? Feet socks. By being selected 30 under 30, the judges believe that you have the likelihood of changing your field over the next half century. What's up? I'm Taylor Offer. I'm Parker Burr and our brand is called Feet. We make the most fun and comfortable hoodies, socks, and clothing in the world. We've sold millions of dollars of product online, been featured on Forbes 30 under 30 list, and most recently we partnered up with billionaire Marcus Limonis. Come check out our hustle. I saw socks and hoodies on the internet. I saw millions of dollars of socks and hoodies through Instagram. We're currently standing in our warehouse outside of LA where we have a couple hundred thousand pairs of socks, tens of thousands of hoodies, pretty much everything. At first we were shipping out of our own garage really. It was us two, every single pair of socks got sent out for our first couple hundred thousand pairs were with our own hands. Now we have Shipmunk, we outsource all of our shipping to them. So that's why in a facility like this, at this scale, we could scale the company a lot better. I'm gonna go find a hoodie because it's freezing in here. So let's go look. B17. <laughs> yeah. B17, is that it? You suck. My battleship. <laughs> Anything over there? Oh, yeah, here's some buddies. Oh, just the inventory on my phone. Damn it. Oh, backwards. <laughs> oh, my God, he's ruining it. We're going to have a little box building competition. First one to build three boxes. Touch and go. <laughs> oh, you lost your technique? No, I didn't. One down. Wow. Two down. Two down. Two down. Congratulations, you get to ship all of our boxes from now on. So senior year, we went on to sell 20,000 pairs out of our backpacks. It was like we'd walk around campus and friends, oh, can I get a pair? And we'd like sling it out of our backpack, On the 20 East Coast, bucks. it was cold. We had these big North faces and we just stuffed socks in every pocket. Yeah. Everywhere people would see us be like, yo, you got any on you? Oh yeah, let me get you. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> and we're just slinging socks out of our pockets. The day after graduation, we got $250,000 from an investor. We had no idea what it was really even like to raise money or anything. We graduate, we have $250,000 and we're like, cool, we have all this money. How do we sell socks? And we had a two-pronged approach. We wanted to go after stores and we wanted to go after influencers. We're these young kids playing an old school game. I knew all these influencers and celebrities lived in LA. So I started following every single kid from Vine and I was watching their content and I saw the same backdrop. It was the same pool, it was the same gym. All their videos were shot in the same spot. A lot of LAX, I convinced the doorman to let me in. And as I'm walking in, I see King Batch in the elevator and he pulled the door open and he says, you coming up? And I was like, oh my God, I think I found this holy grail <laughs> of all these kids. Taylor calls me, he's like, dude, we're moving to LA. We gotta move in this building. We gotta do deals with them. We're gonna live here. We're gonna become friends with them. We're gonna do a deal. And I'm like, and it worked out because when one conversation with Logan, Logan Paul, I was like, dude, I make socks. You gotta sell some socks. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm down. This is sick. So we made some socks with this bird on them. I realized that a lot of these people don't care as much about money as they do about content. And I was like, Logan, here's a good content idea for you. I have this three-wheeled crazy car. I got it wrapped so it looks like these socks. I said, Logan, I'll give you my car if you could sell 20,000 pairs. And we did this whole campaign with Logan. And with that campaign, he ended up selling like half a million dollars of socks. Like in the blink of an eye. It we justified got, everything. We got 1.5 million unique visitors to our site. We got half million dollars in sales. It like, was crazy. It was so crazy. many customers, so many sales. It blew up our business. And that We were really, viral on the internet pretty much we, everywhere. Viral. And that yeah. put us on the map in the e-commerce world because yeah. everyone was like, what the hell are these kids doing? So we couldn't replicate it. So we said, how are we going to build a sustainable business? And about that time, I was watching the show called The Profit. And this guy, Marcus Limones, goes into businesses and helps them scale to the next level. At the end of the show, it says, like, apply here if you have a small business. I applied. And they called us back, like, the next day. Sure enough, Marcus comes walking up to my house a month or two later. He's like, what's up, guys? I'm Marcus. And he was like, guys, what the hell's going on here? There's no way. And then he was like, but your business isn't really, like, struggling He's really. like, you guys already made the U-turn, but you're not struggling, what are you doing? And we just said we want to work on something bigger than this. So now we're in downtown Los Angeles. This is Marcus's office. So when we first met Marcus, we were working off of a couch in my garage, and he brought us here, and this is now our office. Here are some of the 90s designs that you guys asked for. Dude, these, these are, are awesome. awesome, you crushed it. So what's your favorite design that you made so far? The ice pops. Ice pops, yeah. I actually really like this one. <laughs> and this color is so bright that it looks so good on socks. Yeah. 5.15 a.m. right now. We're here at Box Union in Santa Monica. I don't know where Parker is. He usually comes pretty late. He's probably getting coffee or something. Um, ready to go? Let's go. We have a bunch of entrepreneur friends in different companies doing different things we always come and work out with. We don't really have time to work out, so we get up really early in the morning, get the workout in, win the morning, win the day. <laughs> breakfast? Let's get some breakfast. We go sit on the beach. It's 7 a.m. Let's go. 
We got a good group of entrepreneurs who are our friends, so we like talking about what's going on with our companies. We're all companies different sizes. Being under 30 in business, like what are some of the issues everyone's run into being so young and running these multi-million dollar businesses? When you start a business and you have to go all in, it kind of naturally, all the distractions can go away because you really have to focus on what's important. We all go out, we all still have fun, but at the same time, you have to say no to a lot of stuff that we would have said yes to in the past. Yeah. And so the hours outside of work, the weekends, the late nights, that's when we're actually being creative and being productive. Like doing things like this, like literally, I never, I never boxed, like you know <laughs> what I mean? Like started boxing with you guys and just random stuff like that just like fuels the in right. office. Work. It can get lonely and that's why I'm so grateful for all you guys. Like if yeah. you go all in with something and you put your heart into it, the right people will come into your life yep. naturally. We're here in my mom's backyard, the childhood house I grew up in. What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> I was really upset. Oh. I was like, oh my God, a feet tattoo. Like, what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't work? But now I'm just kind of like, that's just part of your history. Yeah. So just don't get any more tattoos. And were you mad at Parker when he talked me into doing it? <laughs> <laughs> or was he talking me into getting my car? <laughs> that was ridiculously silly. There's no windshield. I drive in the car like this. What do you dislike more, the car or the tattoo? The car is probably most impractical. <laughs> <laughs> the tattoo I can live with, but the car is just like, get a windshield. <laughs> Did you think I'd work a normal job? You think I'd be an entrepreneur? No, I didn't know how you would possibly make it in the normal world. Thank you. I'm not in the normal world, <laughs> so but nice of you. behind a desk. And what have you thought over the years that I've, I've moved in? On three separate occasions between 21 and 25, I moved back to your house. It's perfect because you're the perfect age to be doing this. You're the perfect age to be having highs, having lows, successful. Don't make me cry. What am I most proud of? That you've done it. Whether it keeps going longer and longer, that you have tried your dreams, and I think that's fantastic. In 20 years, I see myself on an island somewhere. Work, but not have it feel like work. I used to picture work as a tunnel where you're trying to get to a light at the end. More recently, the perspective has switched to enjoy every second, right? Light is every day. 10 years ago, I probably still thought I'd be in the NBA. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's still a chance. <laughs>